Empty. Te, the hand. Karate, the empty hand, the weaponless weapon. A fighting system of almost supernatural power, of superhuman capability. Its origins, lost in the abyss of time, are lit by the dim light of legend. 3,000 years before the birth of Christ, in the land of the western heaven, India, a great and powerful prince makes the first crude beginnings. He wanders through the forest and jungles of his native land, observing the ways of the animals, the still, breathless stalk of the tiger and his sudden flashing spring. The life and deadly quickness of the serpent flickering in the deep grass. The determined, almost thoughtful moves of the vicious mantis, the most deadly of insects. The sudden flash of the hawk and his final murderous grip on the pheasant's throat. He watches them all and learns from them. Later, in the confines of his luxurious palace, he performs a cruel and bizarre experiment. Desiring to discover the weak points of the human body, he inserts long needles into the bodies of living men, slaves, until a puncture results in death. Then he records the exact spot of the fatal wound. It is said that over a hundred men died to satisfy the ruthless curiosity of that cruel prince, whose name has been justly forgotten. Centuries later, history, as if to atone for the excesses of legend, produces a truly great and benevolent figure, a monk named Bodhidharma, or to give him his Chinese name, Tai Mo. This great man, blessed with the enlightenment conferred by years of Zen Buddhist practice, travels, alone and on foot, across the bandit-ridden mountain fastness between India and China, bringing Zen to the people of the Middle Kingdom. In Honan province, he settles at the Shaolin Monastery, where finding the monks unable to meditate properly because of their poor physical condition, he initiates a series of exercises called the 18 Hands of the Lohan, which not only exercise the body, but prepare the mind for true enlightenment. These exercises with their twofold purpose, the strengthening of the body and the enlightenment of the mind, are the basis, the soul of that art the Chinese called Xuan Fa, the fist art, or Kung Fu, and the Okinawans and Japanese call Karate. From the Shaolin Monastery, the practice of Xuan Fa spread like wildfire. A great Xuan Fa master named Shui Huan studied Tamo's original 18-hand positions and extended them to 72. Later, in Shenzi province, he met a master named Li Shuao, and together they expanded the system again to 170 moves, naming them after the dragon, the crane, the snake, and the leopard. For centuries, the art of the fist was extended and perfected. The people of Siam contributed the kicks and the uses of the foot. The Taiwanese perfected the use of the ends of the fingers. The art spread with sailors and traders to Okinawa, where the idea of the clenched fist was born. From Okinawa, the great master Gichen Funakoshi brought karate to Japan, where it has become as popular as the great native Japanese arts Jiu-Jitsu and Aikido. And from Japan, karate has traveled to America, where even today, the great art that was born 5,000 years ago with the insane curiosity of a cruel prince and was perfected 15 centuries ago by the benevolence of a great and perfect master continues its slow and thoughtful evolution. Three, two, one. 
two points. One one. Continue. Combat between man and man, perhaps the second oldest form of exercise in the world. Since the dawn of time, men have been forced to fight to defend their homes, their property, their ideals, and their lives. Those who fought well survived. Those who didn't, died. Martial arts is that area of human science that teaches men how to fight well how to survive in a dangerous and violent world. In the thousands of years during which the martial arts have been evolving, techniques have been developed that are so effective, so deadly, that their unrestrained use in practice fighting, which you are watching now, would certainly result in death or serious injury to one or both of the combatants. But the highly trained martial artist has such control of his power that he can stop deadly techniques and inch short of his target. And thus, practice fighting becomes possible and a deadly fighting art can be practiced as a sport. It is because of this control that freestyle sparring, once thought to be too dangerous, has now become a part of the training in almost all karate styles and many kung fu styles. But martial art is more than a sport, more than a self-defense system. It's a way of life. It does not create athletes with bulging muscles or finely tuned murderers. It creates men. Men like Ron Van Cleef. You are watching a man, unquestionably the most effective empty hand fighter in the Western Hemisphere. This is the most dangerous man in America. Seventh degree Kiyoshi Shihan in the American Goju system of karate. Creator of Aikijitsu, the most revolutionary and effective fighting system in the world today. And founder of the Chinese Goju system. This is Ron Van Cleef, the Black Dragon. The demonstration you are watching is a series of exercises called apons, in which an attack is answered with a series of counterattacks until the attacker is defeated. It is here that the imagination, the power, and the flow of Kiyoshi Van Cleef's responses are evident, even to the untrained eye. To a martial artist, they are little short of amazing. I think the understanding that you develop from the martial arts uh, enhances your whole life. It gives you a different sort of perspective, a new framework of reality. It uh, teaches you how to deal with yourself and the environment at one time. And my teacher told me, uh, defeat the self first to know. Aikijitsu is a low energy input art where it does not take power. Karate is speed plus time plus focus equals power. And Aikijitsu is uh, mind power equals physical. Mind power equals energy. It's uh, more of an internal art, the Aikijitsu. The martial arts is 80% mental and 20% physical. You'll find that uh, once you study for a while, all the physical variables become nothing. Because a front kick is just as easy as a punch. A knife hand is just as easy as a flying back kick. A flying back kick is just as easy as a new punch or a spear hand or anything. It's all exactly the same. Once you've become aware of your potentiality and your ability and capabilities within your framework of reality, of course, you develop fully. Your full range, your full range of human potential is elongated. Just the... Uh, Execution of basic technique develops uh, stability, um, confidence, awareness, endurance. It has so many benefits, and the benefits are mental. exercise called kata is common to many of the martial arts. 
It's a set of prearranged moves, a sort of fighting dance that the martial artist uses to keep himself in shape and to create the correct mental attitude for combat. Black Dragon Kata is most functional. It deals with uh, the basic blocking system, basic kicking and punching mechanisms, uh, basic stances, even some advanced technique so that the student understands that by the time you reach black belt, which is uh, the level that the black dragon copy is taught, you understand the basic structural designs of technique. Cutting the carrot. It shows a confidence in the self, in your precision, your accuracy. It shows an awareness that you understand the full capabilities of yourself. The sword and the self is a very spiritual thing. The sword becomes an extension of your hand. You develop both at the same time. Cutting the carrot is uh, a test of one's fortitude. The carrot cut, the potato cut, they're all just as simple as a punch or kick or, or anything. It all comes out to the same thing. It's just a physical variable. Being able to change energy into force, into soft, into hard, into just fluidity. In, in breaking techniques, which is called Tamashawadi, it's a basic uh, speed plus time plus energy plus power. Axiom, the principle. What it does, it teaches how to use your body like a weapon. Is maximum concentration to a small area at focus points. Kiyoshi Van Cleef is not only a great fighter. He is one of the leading theorists of martial arts in the world today. The revolutionary fighting style, Aikijitsu, is the product of 17 years of exhaustive research into all the martial arts. Karate, Kung Fu, Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido, Pa Kwa, Arnis Di Mano. Fighting styles from all over the world. When your body is itself a weapon, it can be used with great effect against other more common weapons, such as the knife. A knife becomes just an extension of the empty hand. It is much more restricting than just having the empty hand. And uh, once you get into a knife, you don't use your other four ways. But don't get me wrong, a guy that knows how to use a knife properly is a dangerous adversary. And I've uh, used uh, techniques on the street, uh, being attacked with knife and things. I've even been cut, but that's the other person that suffered deadly. Yeah. See, martial arts is a therapy, more so than just a self-defense art, because it builds better human beings, develops the character. That's why I study martial arts, to give myself a more uh, logical and economical way of uh, functioning within this environment. Kiyoshi Ron Van Cleef, fighter, theorist, philosopher, one of the new breed of great martial artists America is beginning to produce.
many styles of karate being taught in the United States today, most come from Japan. But the original home of karate, as distinct from Kung Fu, is Okinawa. One of the most famous schools of Okinawan karate is Weiji Ru. Sensei George Matson is a fifth degree black belt and a teacher of karate. His style, Weiji Ru, is an Okinawan style and the oldest, most classical karate being taught in America. It's a straightforward practical fighting system based on straight punches and kicks and circular blocks and places great emphasis on correct mental attitude. The basic Weijiru Kata San Chen, here performed by Justin Testa, creates that correct attitude in the minds of both new student and old master and is the basis of the Weijiru style. No, I'm not trying to kill my student. This most unusual set of movements are a very ancient drill designed to instill confidence, develop strength, and probably most importantly, created to still one's mind, enabling a person to be able to fight without any preconceived thoughts. The monks from China who created this unusual set, or as it's called in Okinawa, kata, called it San Chin. The student has complete control over his movements, being able to withstand strong blows to his body without upsetting him or in any way distracting him. The newest student learns Sanchen, and the most advanced master continues to practice Sanchen. The second kata of the Weijiru system, here being performed by Jimmy Maloney, is called Kanshiwa and contains actual fighting movements. These motions are studied by the student in the next exercise, in which the student, attacked by three others, replies to these attacks with the moves that he has learned and studied in the kata itself. <laughs> Another unique aspect of Weijiru is the exercise called Dan Kumite. Dan Kumite is a prearranged fight in which all the attacks and defenses are known to both students. It teaches correct application of attack and defense, correct distance, timing, and mental attitude. It's performed here by Justin Testa and Bob Campbell. Master Weiji told me years ago that our style was not one that a shallow mind could comprehend and therefore I should not try to impress anyone with, with its power. Those that are ready to study a system that is meaningful will search it out. And he said to be ready to teach those students who search for the real karate. Along with mental attitude, Weiji Ru stresses the conditioning of the body to absorb strong blows so that the equilibrium of the fighter will not be upset if he should be struck by an attacker. The effectiveness of this training is evident in this demonstration, in which two-inch pine staves are broken over the thigh. Forearm and calf of Bob Campbell, who absorbs these powerful attacks with perfect equanimity and without sustaining any injury whatsoever. Along with training the body to absorb blows, Weijiru also trains the body to give them. Here, in slow motion, Justin Testa puts his bare toes through two pine boards with the Weiji front snap kick.
Karate has been better known in America. The father of karate and the original of all the empty hand martial arts is beginning to be studied in this country more and more. And Kung Fu is taking its rightful place in the hierarchy of martial arts. One of the most famous of the thousands of Kung Fu styles is Wing Chun. The performer is Jerry Gardner, Sifu in Wing Chun Kung Fu. Kung Fu Kata, as you can see, are softer and more flowing than Karate Kata, and their emphasis is not so much on strength as on movement. The moves are more mystical, more secret, not so obviously fighting moves. But be warned, anyone fighting a Kung Fu master will quickly discover that precise and deadly fighting moves are hidden in the dance-like motions of the Kung Fu Kata. I used to really be in the fighting. I Sometimes I'd be... You know, you have a lot of anger inside, a lot of emotion inside. You go into dojo, you want to hit somebody, you want to hit the back so you get that anger out. And I find now is that I don't want to fight. You know, I don't feel like I want to fight. And if I had to defend myself, that would be something else. Some forms deal with developing the fluidity of motion so you can flow, you can feel the flow, you can be in the flow. the quiet, the control of the Kung Fu Kata carry over into the world of combat as Jerry Gardner spars with Speedy Lecoq and Tony Basso, moving smoothly and calmly to defend and counterattack with perfect balance and timing. This calmness in the face of danger is the true legacy of serious Kung Fu training. The motions that I was doing in the karate, they weren't me. You know, I couldn't feel them anymore. So I started to search and I guess through reading and probably influenced by the media and stuff like that, I went to the Wing Chun. And I found the Wing Chun to be what I was looking for. It was simple, but yet it was, it's not simple, but subtle, but yet it was complicated. Um, it required and developed concentration, focus, relaxation, speed of hand, concentrating of the eye very strong stance, strong legs, and I really begin to see it. And to me, the martial arts is it's a learning process, it's a process of, one, how to deal with life. And when sparring, each time you step in there, it's like saying, this is death. Like you try to say, this is death, and I don't want to get hit. If I get hit, I die. But then, on the other hand, are you afraid to die? Have you really dealt with your consciousness not knowing what happens beyond the point of death or can you get in there and say okay i can face it and when it's time i can let go or saying if i get hit i get hit that's the way it goes the kata is a shotokan kata called mp the man is Little John Davis, one of the most feared fighters on the East Coast, a practitioner of the murderous Japanese art of jiu-jitsu. I never criticize one art, say one art is better than the other. All arts work. It's going to be very deadly because, like, a jiu-jitsu is based on the destruction of the bodies. Gouging eyes, nose, blowing, whatever we get comes off. It's a, it's a very deadly art, you know. And, and uh, in some of the techniques, you can notice the fingers probably breaks across the eyes, which is be gouging out the eyes, peeling the skin of the face, grabbing the groin. And we normally always throw our man on it until we try not to get him standing.
His speed is dazzling, legendary. His techniques are thrown with such profusion, most of them are scarcely visible to the naked eye. But as Robert Croson, his student, will tell you, just because you can't see them, don't mean you can't feel them. Davis, a modest, soft-spoken, and gentle master of a vicious art, jiu-jitsu. Musa Kamara is a master of the youngest of the martial arts, Aikido, invented in the century by Master Uyashiba. Aikido is a purely defensive and humanitarian martial art. Its ideal is not only to defend oneself, but to also prevent injury to the attacker. The basic idea of the system is that a person who attacks another must exert a force. And if the defender can deflect that force into another direction, then he can use the aggressor's own strength to defeat him. As you watch Master Kamara, you will see that he uses very little of his own strength, just enough to deflect the momentum of the attacker and turn his own strength back upon him to defeat him. Kamala, the highest ranking non-oriental master of the art of Aikido, an art that proves that the aggressor cannot win. Louis Negley, a fifth degree black belt in Sanuka's Jiu-Jitsu, gives a startling demonstration of the internal force, or Chi, which to martial artists is the source of all power and the goal of all training. Uh, one of the feats that I've done uh, with this bed of nails is something that never thought possible. And, uh, People, learned men, physicists, and mathematicians said it was impossible to do. And after coming down and seeing it, they said they can't figure it out. And uh, calculating the weight of the sledgehammer and the uh, bed of nails and the sharpness of the nails, they said it was physically impossible to do. But after seeing it, they congratulated me and said that they can't explain it, but they do believe it and it is real.
Okay. has katas for weapons, such as the sai and the nunchakas, as well as for the empty hand. The kata you are watching is a shorin-ru kata called bo shodan. Bo is the Japanese term for a fighting stick. Shodan is the first rank of the black belt. The kata is performed by Charles Bonnet, a sixth degree black belt in the shorin-ru system. 
You can relate the kata to sort of what the uh, boxer would do as far as shadow boxing, more or less. It's, it's, it's equivalent to the same thing. Um, of course, the kata has a, deep, a, a deeper meaning, a more spiritual meaning, because what you're doing in a kata, of course, is um, you're training yourself spiritually to perform these movements. And each movement has, of course, its own meaning. It was meant for a certain purpose. I would say that the kata is like the dictionary of a martial arts system or style, or whatever. But um, what I've done throughout my 15, 16 years of uh, karate study is that I've, I've studied the kata and I've derived what I think is the best things to apply. The kata is good to develop the fluidity that you need, the power of concentration. The uh, it's good for building up, you know, the body as far as uh, muscles are concerned. A lot of martial artists don't like to lift weights because it tends to to tighten the muscle, and um, it doesn't really do anything for you as far as flexibility is concerned. Sensei Bonet believes in kata. He does them as they are meant to be done, with precision and speed, grace and power, with utter sincerity. When you have seen this man perform a kata, then you begin to know what karate is all about. the time we go to sleep at night, either verbally or physically, <laughs> the universal law is positive begets a positive, and negative begets a negative, and universal principle is cause and effect, you know, um, life is a circle, what goes around comes around, I'll be careful what I say and what I do, to me, uh, playing the violin is martial artistry, it's just another way of communicating my spirit to the listener, to, to the senses. I think as one develops in your higher Don level, you begin to see the relationship uh, of everything to everything. You know, I think one of the greatest bits of philosophy ever was, was said was phrase, uh, not by anyone necessarily famous, but just uh, a phrase that comes out of the ghetto. It's called uh, everything is everything. And if you really look at that phrase, you'll see that that phrase is a complete 360 degree circle of understanding. John Blair, musician, philosopher, karate man, the renaissance man of the American karate world. Ever since karate came to America, there has been controversy over the place of women in the martial arts. Some instructors refuse to even allow them in the dojo, while others accept them willingly in their classes. Elsie Roman is a student of Frank Ruiz and a black belt in the Nisi Goju system. Sensei Ruiz has said, and we quote, In my school, we don't have male black belts and female black belts. We just have black belts. Thank <laughs> you. 
her work out with Wilfredo Roldan, we had to agree. Elsie Roman is a true black belt. The real future of martial arts in America rests with the youngsters. It is out of the ranks of the kids who are starting out today that the great karate men of tomorrow will come. This is Nelson Taylan. He's eight years old and a green belt, a student of Bob Long. Though he's only been studying a year, already he possesses the intense eye and studied motion of a young master. He performs a kata with the nunchakas, an Okinawan weapon. Sup Kim is a student of Ron Van Cleef, a first degree black belt at the age of 13. Sensei Van Cleef says of him, I wish I'd had the moves he has when I was his age. He'll be one of the best before he's 20. Everything you have seen has been real. Now let's take a look at the fantasy world of the movies, where the karate man is invincible, where children can defeat grown men, women can destroy armed opponents, where one man can defeat 50 men without working up a sweat. So let's go to the movies. <laughs> to pull a gun on him, you better be quick. The Street Fighter, one man against crime. One man against the hard drugs of the neighborhood. A man against corrupted police. After years 
martial arts in school, he gets a chance to use it on the street where it counts. This is the Street Fighter. He looks like an ordinary guy, but mess with him, and it'll be the last thing you ever do. Rough, tough, and dirty. Fantasy, let's turn to reality. The famous Frank Ruiz knife defense performed for you by the master himself, Kiyoshi Shihan, Frank Ruiz. I will not fight a man for the sake of fighting. I will fight to the death for principle. Even with my experience doing this knife fight, I've been cut twice. We're using a live blade and he's really coming after me. If I thought he wasn't coming for me or it was a rubber knife, I wouldn't even try. See, I wouldn't be at peak form. And the only way you can operate at peak form is to have it for real. Alex plus one Sternberg, fifth degree black belt, performs the MP Kata of Shotokan Karate. can know karate and he can be an expert that doesn't mean that he's superman and it doesn't mean that he's invincible and in our demonstration we show that a man attacks with a knife and you deliver a blow to this man it doesn't immediately mean that you kill the guy it's not so easy to kill somebody karate is not a physical uh, art not at all karate is a mental art karate is a system of uh, thinking it's a philosophy it's to teach somebody first of all to control himself fully and to always have mastery of himself once you can attain mastery of yourself it's relatively easier to master or to control your opponent thomas la puppet fifth degree black belt in shotokan karate member of the karate hall of fame spokesman for the idea of karate for the black man an american karate master without karate kata i feel a karate ka's uh, training is not fulfilled. 
Because it's something that you can go into the remotest of areas and just train it to complete exhaustion. When a man can go and train where no one is watching, then he finds the true perfection of his dedication. Sensei's La Puppet and Sternberg, old friends, close friends. Together they perform an exacting and dangerous demonstration of a karate man's defense against the knife attack. In this extraordinary demonstration, Tom La Puppet breaks an unsupported one-inch pine board in mid-air with the lightning speed and precise control. Sensei Pete Serengano gives us a few lessons in jiu-jitsu. The very sturdy fellow he's throwing around is his student, Bob Long. Outside. Wrist grab. Grabbing the wrist, locking the thumb. Hey, with the throw. Strike into the jar. Hey. Strike an empty shot through the soul. Pushing in. Hey! Outside hand. Locking. <laughs> Roundhouse kick. Catching. On the inside, striking to the throat area. Once again, Ooh, back of the head. Ramos kick stepping on the inside. Stay! The grab. Locking in. service so I put my qualifications of what I've done so I put down you know a little bit of uh, jiu-jitsu or hand-to-hand -hand combat karate and they just sent me to a school so never knowing I was gonna go so I went to school for nine months for nine to ten hours a day training I mean training like 
there was no such thing as time for breathing. You trained and trained and trained, and they made killers out of you. We were actually what you call a professional killer, because you press the button, we react. And so that's why I speak now, because I know what it's all about, because I've been there. I know what it is to take a life by using that. I know how hard it is to stop once you start. We were trained, there's no such thing as training as it is today. We were trained to kill and maim. It's not just the first sport, now we train it as a sport. I've had a dojo now for about over 20 years. But I had to curb myself because my way of teaching was the wrong way. It was the way of a killer. The art is to help each other. The black belt is a sacred thing. This black belt is, is something that everybody doesn't achieve. And then they do achieve it. We must honor each other and help each other. Regardless of what the price is, there's no such thing as no. Because you're a warrior. You have to lay your life down for the man next to you. And that's the whole thing. Sensei Pete Serengano, 8th degree black belt. He's sometimes called the old man of karate in America, but nobody calls him that to his face. Pete Serengano, warrior, teacher, friend, a man among men. We filmed Byung Hung Park as he was warming up with his student Danny Doyle, preparatory to performing one of the most extraordinary exhibitions of physical prowess ever seen in America. Sensei Park has only recently come to America from Thailand, where he was head of the Taekwondo Federation. Taekwondo is the Korean martial art, and Sensei Park is one of its greatest masters, perhaps one of the greatest of all time. His demonstrations drew gaps of amazement from all the other great masters on the set, and these are men who are not easily impressed. of solid pine boards. Blows like these could crack an opponent's skull like a watermelon. Sensei Park picked up these rocks on the side of the road on his way to this filming. What he does to them needs no description.
amazing demonstration of all. On the ground, a dozen broken beer bottles. The pieces of glass are razor sharp. Watch. you about to see is impossible. If anyone told you about it, you would swear it was impossible. You would bet money it was impossible. Nevertheless, you're going to see it here on the screen before your eyes. Professor Frank De Felice is a master of jiu-jitsu and a student of the ancient Chinese art of qi, or internal energy. In the world of the martial arts, where the extraordinary is considered ordinary and the unusual is seen every day, Professor De Felice consistently performs the impossible. He will accept what to any other person would be fatal blows to the most vulnerable and sensitive parts of his body and shake them off as though he were brushing away flies. First. Let's meet the men who will assist him in his demonstration and get an idea of the power in their fists and feet. Ron Scott, second degree black belt in Chinese goju. Roldan, second degree black belt in Nisi Koju. Teddy Wilson, fourth degree black belt in Chinese Koju. Sensei Roldan shows you his power again. Degree black belt in Nisi Goju Karate. Once more, the power of Wilfredo Roldan. Now, Professor Frank De Felice, watch him. You will never forget what you are about to see. It's called Qi. Qi. It all means internal energy, power. You could consider it to be a life source. Without breath, you're dead. So I, it's that one. It's the breath inside you, the air that controls the energy. 
At times you breathe heavy to do heavier things. At times you breathe light when you're doing nothing. So it's controllable. You begin from absolutely nothing, learning to control your breath just to be standing there. I can remember getting dizzy just breathing. Then you learn to direct it to different areas of the body. Mostly to the organs. I'd rather have a kick in the groin than, than a good professional hit me in the throat. This form of breathing that myself and these other instructors do, this intense, should not be taught to just anybody. I think it should be limited to black belts who prove their self. This is Joe Hess, six foot four inches, 240 pounds, and a third degree black belt in Gojuru Karate Do. Perhaps the most powerful man in the martial arts in the world. To me is a weapon, somebody that doesn't know how to fight at all, that knew this, could stand right in your face and defy you to hurt him. I don't want people to get the misconception that if you do this, you can't be hurt. Because I believe that this form of key energy, there is definite levels of it. I'm at a certain level. My instructor is at a certain level. And I believe that if the time should come where I, I am punched by a professional that has in his punching ability more energy than I have in my absorbing ability that you know where the weakness is going to be it's going to be me and maybe fortunately for me due to this time I have involved with this breathing I won't be injured fatally but I recognize the possibility every time I do it I'm aware I'm aware that I could either be dead or not dead. Get ready, get ready. Yes, yes, put it on. Back, go, for real. And it's, it's nothing in between. If you are up to the standards, and you try to do it, you're as good as dead or you're on your way to the hospital. Because medically, the books I have state that people that do this are dead. Once again, watch Teddy Wilson observe the power of his kick. Now you have seen the martial arts as they are in real life. You've seen the speed and power of the karate man, the grace and fluency and focus of the kung fu master, the calm and gentle courage of the Aikido man, and the frightening strength and fatal effectiveness of the master of jujitsu. You've seen the viciousness of combat and the serene contemplation of the kata. You've seen unparalleled demonstrations of physical ability and spiritual capacity. You've seen the indescribable, the incredible, the impossible. But most of all, you've seen the real, the unbelievable world of the martial arts, the ultimate weapon.